You tell me one athlete right now that's been dominating the game for 16 years straight without a loss. Tell me one. Tell me just one. How you doing everyone? My name is Ryan and this is Ali and welcome back to another edition of Box Talk. It's time for this week in boxing. Huge weekend of fights, a lot to get through. So let's start with Ali's favourite fight of the weekend. Olivia Solis versus Tony Thompson. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I thought, where are you going with this? Um, you know what's funny about that fight? A fight from the fact, I don't know if people know it, it got uh, stopped in the ninth. Um, uh, Solis's promoter. Went, went nuts on Solis. I don't know if you saw no, it. Yet. Went absolutely nuts on him, saying, this guy, like, I put so much money into him. I don't know if you remember, but he was the guy in the corner when he had the Vitali injury yeah, and I was like this. Because yeah. he spent so much money on get Solis, getting him over from Cuba and yeah. set up training camps. And he's like, he now is a bum. He's gone from he's gone from a contender to a journeyman. He says he's still on, under contract with me, but I'm going to feed him to the wolves and let him fight any <laughs> up and coming hungry yeah. uh, prospect. Beast. The beast, basically. Yeah, he's, he's that beast. upset with him. Yeah, he's basically I'm not taking him for me. I, 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 I didn't see the fight. Um, I'm going to catch up with it. But how much did he weigh? Was, uh, was it was it north of two seventy again? Yeah, around that two six five, two seventy. Yeah, and he's barely six foot. This so, guy, talented, oh, wasted. Keep going. Unbelievable Wasted. talent. We're talking about Olympic gold medalist, yeah. world, Ch world Ch championship Ch 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 gold medalist. Yes. I mean, big David A in the final. It looks fantastic. I, I, and then, boom. I'm not trying to blow you up, but before the Vitali fight, you were saying this could be the one that could cause him problems because yeah. because his, his amateur experience, what he has in his tank. He just doesn't care. You are trying to blow me. You just blew me up. No, I didn't. Well, no, I'm not trying to blow you up. But now, but now, now, I didn't say what you really said. I just gave you a little highlight of what you said. Yeah. 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 Okay. What else we got last? What else? Last night. Let's start with. Liam Walsh. Yeah, uh, fantastic. Um, punch perfect. Yeah, punch perfect. Punch we were perfect. saying from the first round that um, he looks sharp. We, yeah. were there, we were there ringside. Um, we were saying he looks sharp, he looks good. And I think about the second round, we were saying that, yeah, he's going to get a stoppage in this. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and no, no, if I'm honest, you were saying that. I was almost yeah. like, no, this is going to go over the long haul. Yeah. Because these guys fought 16, 17 months ago, mm -hmm. and it was a very, very close decision. And to yeah. the point where a lot of people thought Jomo might have been robbed. I didn't think so. Mm. The only way to kind of shut that guy up is do what he did there, yeah. which is almost fight his fight. Walsh is almost a back foot fight, a counter puncher. He said, all right, let's just trade yeah. And he traded. No, he's traded. What, he, what, what got me is that from the first round, he was landing with a good solid jab, but Murray was not prepared, prepared for that. It seemed like it was rocking him and surprising him. Mm. Rocking down to his feet, actually, was like, wait a minute. I shouldn't be taking these type of shots right now. I agree. And then by the time he realised he was taking shots, it was too late. Yeah. I think by the third round, the eye started swelling up, and you can see that he was just breaking his will completely. Yeah. Uh, Let's go Tyson Fury first. Okay. Tyson Fury. Mm. Um, he was having fun. Yeah. He was yeah. having fun. It was. It was. Um. It, it. It was not for him, by the way. Not because of him, but it was a glorified sparring session. That's yeah. how easy he made it look. And what I mean by that, I don't mean this guy didn't come to fight, and I don't mean Tyson Fury was taking it that easy. But Tyson Fury made it look that easy. Um, I was saying, uh, watching the fight, that his footwork, even his hand movement, mm. his play, is very, very awkward. People. I mean, you've almost. You can't you can't sp get sparring for that. It's yeah. very very awkward. You don't see heavyweights fight the way he fights. I also think it's a psychology thing as well. Whereas when you when you as a fighter you're thinking, oh, he's six foot nine. Oh, he's two hundred and fifty pounds, ninety pounds. He can't be that fast. Mm. He can't be that nimble. And then you get in the ring and you got a six foot nine guy that actually is fast and nimble. Fury does these things where he hits you with a combination, then pivots out and turns you away and kind of leaves you sitting in the ropes, and he's like, leaves you, leaves you, yeah. leaves you dumb. Yeah, leaves you dumb. You're thinking like a six foot nine guy should not be doing that. Yeah, yeah, a guy that weight should not be doing that. Mm. And that's what I think confuses people. Where they think, oh, I'm gonna catch him, and they can't. <coughs> mm, I agree. No, I, I agree. It's a great performance. Uh, I'm not sure about the singing after. Yeah, yeah. And then Elvis <laughs> getting him into the yeah. rings, which I love, by the way. Yeah, you're going crazy. I was, I love the Elvis thing, but the singing <laughs> after, I, I'm not a fan of. Yeah. I think Fury's definitely come leaps and bounds. His camp looks well. He looked, I think, as well, cosmetically, he could look better than the Chisora fight, which I thought was good for him as well. They asked for Vladimir. He wants Vladimir next. It'll be interesting. Yeah, Mick Hennessy has come out and said, um, if he can do it, it's going to happen in September. I think it's far too long a wait for him to fight in February and then fight again in September. September. He needs yeah. another fight in yeah. July. Yeah, definitely. But the problem is, what do you do? Do you take a bum? Yeah. Keep, people are going to complain. Yeah. You take a tough fight, too risky, strange position. It is strange. It's one of the situations there where you've got to look at it again from Vladimir's perspective. Vladimir's the champion. He's fighting in mid April. Yeah. So he's not going to fight again in June or July. Yeah. He's mostly going to fight in September. Yeah. So they have to follow the champion schedule. Mm. Unfortunately, that's the way the game goes. If you're the champion, you're the contender, you follow me, I don't follow you. Very true. Um, let's go with Chris Eubank Jr. and Dimitri Chudinov. Yeah. 
What a fight. Guess what? Before I go there, what a fight. Mm. Tremendous. Yeah, no, no. Uh, he was putting deep. Yeah, he was putting deep waters between one and six, maybe one and seven. I can't remember. Yeah, I have to watch it again. One, one and six, one and seven. Yeah. It was a fight where I was thinking, uh oh. Not remember, not not too dissimilar to Billy Joe Saunders, where, but it was Billy Joe Saunders always made made him look silly mm. between one and six. So everyone was like, yeah. oh. This guy just stood made him, and made trained, him, made him, made fight, him fight, work. Make him fight. To the point where I thought every round mm. was energy sapping. I yeah. think he got cut early, uh, mouth bleed mm. early, and it was like literally war from round one. Yeah. I tell you what, um, before the fight, a lot of people say the fight could be easy or, or all sorts of stories and everything. And I say you got to look at the, the styles of the fight. Chilov is a pressure fire. He's a throws volume, volume, volume. You have to go through that pressure to move forward. And he did. I think Eubank comes out with a tremendous amount of credit in this fight. Only thing I will say which is a criticism is the refereeing. They had some guy called, it was supposed to be um, a British referee and the Chudinov's team didn't want that, they said they were an international referee and they got a guy from Sweden called Michael Hook. Yeah. And Michael Hook done Chudinov a discredit. Mm. I counted by myself, not saying all these punches landed, at least 58 punches in that combination in the 12th round. Unanswered. And unanswered. 58 punches. Not saying they all landed flush on the chin, but he was just taking and taking them, some going in, some going out. That is way too much. We were there, like we said, ringside. The whole place was going crazy saying, stop the fight, stop the fight. Everyone was standing up screaming at the ref and he would not stop the fight. Dangerous move. It is a dangerous move. Um, after the fight, Kushi Bank said he wants Billy Joe Saunders. Uh, the guy that was uh, speaking to uh, Kushi Bank said that Coral got him as a one to two favourite. This is Eubank Jr. Yeah. to beat Billy Joe Saunders in a rematch. I think that what they're trying to say really from that standpoint is Billy Joe Saunders got an inexperienced Eubank Jr. Yeah. Eubank Jr. has almost grown up in that one fight yeah. now, learnt a bit more yeah. and come the rematch, mm. I'm not saying it'll be an easy fight, but one to two favourites, quite a big, it's kind of wide score. It is a wide score, but it was a good match, it was a close match. The fight was we decided, obviously, in the final round because you had did nothing in the first four or five rounds. If that fight was to take place now and you had actually worked in the first four or five rounds, you never know. Very similar to George Groves the Girl, this thing. Yeah. Very, very similar. Yeah. Like, close yeah. fight, and the second one, everyone thinks the girl would run yeah. through it now. Very, very similar. Um, go on, let's talk about that. Okay. Let's talk about Carl Frampton. Yes, sir. Tremendously impressive performance. Yep. A star is born. Yep. He's definitely got new fans from that performance on TV. Oh, yep. Okay, I, the fight was only, what, bloody 12 hours ago. Makes no difference, yeah? He's made a tremendous impact. I don't know what to say. I just say that, see, um, that was solid performance. So before, we were talking before in the previews that, um, is he ready for Rigo? And everyone saying, nah, 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 nah. I changed my mind. <laughs> I changed my mind. I think Wait, wait, you don't anyone... think he's ready? You don't really, you, no, no, sorry, I'm going to you. You don't think he's ready for Scott Quigg? Why would he be ready for Rigo? No, 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 no. We'll talk about it in a second. Please. Yeah? Styles make fights, yeah, and I think Quigg's style was disaster for Frampton. Disaster? I've, I've changed my mind. Do you think it was disaster? I've, cha I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. Yeah, after, after the past couple performances. But... If anyone's going to challenge Rigo and see how good he is, it has to be Frampton. Completely, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Frampton's, um, Frampton's energy, I, I don't know, obviously I've, I've not been privy to go to Ireland and, and watch a fight, but the energy it creates, it just seems not normal. Collins Eubank, or when, you know, when Eubank travelled over to fight Steve Collins, it just, the energy, and he, he just seems to, some people, that mm. steps away from them, some yeah. people don't like fighting at home, believe it or not. He just seems to, it galvanises him. And right now you're talking about a guy, like, like you say, Rig you look at Rigo's last two or three fights, you'd arguably say that Frampton's full, I wouldn't say better competition, but do you know what I mean? In yeah. terms of Kiko Martinez and Avalos, yeah. I mean, I can't remember the guy Rigo fought, the, 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 the tall guy. The tall guy. Yeah, and before yeah. that was who? Again, he fought in yeah. Thailand, didn't he? Yeah. He fought, I think, mm, before. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So in terms of... Rigo, Rigo, Rigo's list hit list is because he fought the there, who was a pound for pound, top five, top six at the time he fought him. But coming up in weight. But coming up in weight. So that's the reason why, you know, you say, that guess what, he fought the better opposition because of that, that one particular fight. Yeah. But based on the other opposition, you say it's really compared. Because didn't he fight Beck Cole as well? Just for Beck Cole? Yeah. Did he fought Joseph Beck Cole as well. So, you know, yeah, I'll get your point. Yeah. One thing I will say on the broadcast, though, is that um, Scott Quigg was there. Mm. He was ringside, he came to ring to do an interview with Frampton and Barry McGuigan, and Barry McGuigan chewed him up slyly. It was, it was funny. He basically told Quig, you'd have a fake belt. He said, we're the real champ, you're not. We're the draw, you're not. 
you come in our terms, basically. He said it in the nicest possible way, but he said it. And uh, guys, you watched it, you, you had to laugh. Quig was there and he couldn't say nothing. Quig tried to say, well, you're Joy Island, we're both children in the UK, we're this and that. And Frampton, and, and, and the group just kept going on and on and on that. We're the real champion, you're not. No, no, I, I've said it a lot. Every Frampton, Quig type thing, I, I've, I've mm -hmm. always said it. Hey, you know what me and Ryan are like already. We don't, we're, we're, not, a reg, we're not regular belt fans. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I get it. Yeah. It's like it's even Eubank Jr. We're big fans of now. We're not going to call him a world champion. Yeah. It's an interim regular type belt, yeah. and we're not going to call him world champion yet. Yeah. And, and we're, yeah. you know, so we do go all over. But more people say we don't. Um, and Scott Quigg, unless I see him sell out an arena by himself with practically no undercard, because I mean, look, yesterday he had what Denton Vassell as an yeah. undercard, mm. which he ain't going to bring ticket yeah. sellers to it. Then I'll say the the, the comparative. Until that happens, Barry McGuigan's completely right. It's not a real bout. And Frampton is the draw. Frampton yeah. got the ITV deal. Right now it's just tick, yeah. tick, 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 tick. And that makes this, this deal Let's even get harder. To the news right now. And I'm gonna start with Jim promotion in Canada. They are suing Golden Boy and HBO for 1.3 <coughs> million mm -hmm. for apparently teeth in David Lemieux. What they're saying is that they put money, they, they have to move from the beginning of his career, they invested in the put in positions and they renegotiated his contract so they can help Lemieux grow. Yeah. And within those codes of the renegotiation, they used the Golden Boy and HBO used that claw to pull Lemieux away. The claws are there to use them. If there's, if there's something there as an opening, i.e. Al Heyman's yeah. been doing for the last two years, yeah. use it. If you thought it was wrong in the first place, you don't sign the contract. I'm telling you now, that's it. I mean, you can't just almost, we bring a kid through, um, we've helped him, we, well, sorry, there's something that's going on there. And to be fair, 1.2 million means Golden Boy probably give him 400,000 400, in a suitcase, yeah. underneath a bonnet, shut up. <laughs> yeah. you know, 1.2 million for David Lemieux doesn't seem yeah. bad going right now. He's a good looking kid, he'll sell tickets, yeah. and he's probably talking about a GGG fight coming yeah. up, and he's probably going to be world champion in a few months. Yeah. Exactly. 1.2 million ain't that bad. You see, the thing about it is what got me to think about the whole scenario here, yeah, right, I get it. Don't want to talk about Big Al, but I have to mention Big Al again, is that with his such a huge stable, he's drawing people away. People have to actually fight for their few major stars they have. Mm. Because now, if everyone's going to one side and you've only got two major stars and someone coaxes your star away, mm. where does it leave your promotion? No, you're 100% right. Everyone now, apart from Al Heyman, everyone now has yeah. two or three marquee fighters. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone, you, you name who's the top top ranked fighters and you're, you're struggling. Yeah. You're struggling when it goes past Bradley, Marquez, Pacquiao. You're yeah. kind of like, um, ooh, yeah. um, everyone's now got two or three. Yeah. So you can understand this gym promotion yeah. doing what they've done. Yeah. But you can also understand Golden Boy trying to snatch fighters right now. Yeah, as well. yeah, of um, another thing as well. Let's talk with um, John Pascal and Colvin. Mm -hmm. Two things that came to mind. One, there's no drug testing for this fight now. Yeah, After all the controversy where they're going back and forth, there is no drug testing for the fight. Is this m not, not money, or they can't negotiate, or the contract signed and they weren't in the original contract? So is it now that we messed up? I'm just going to leave it. I think it's a case of look, let's go. Let's both let's both just take our steroids. And let's, see, let's see who can beat who on the most drugs. It's ridiculous. I think they'll all, <laughs> they'll probably have their little piss in the cup after the fight. Yeah. But that's not what I care about. I care about all the lead up to it. Um, it's a shame. It's a shame how two big promotion companies can't get together and say, look, two this is what's going to happen. It's ridiculous. Yeah, two marquee. Yeah, and two of the biggest stars in light heavyweight as well mm. right now. Kovalev is probably one of the biggest names in boxing right now. Mm. For Kathy Duver and John Pascal's representatives to not be able to get together to do the most simplest thing, which is someone come round and you piss in a cup and take a bit of blood. Yeah. Embarrassing. Anyway, also with Pascal. Do you hear Pascal's comment about Rocky IV? No. Pascal said, uh, this is like Rocky IV. He's already killed the guy in the ring. Yeah, I'll and wait. I'm like Rocky coming over yeah. to take him over. I know promoting the fight is one thing, selling the fight is another thing. But come on now, that's a little bit low. Yeah, low, low, and a bit silly. Yes, so yeah, you, I, I don't know. Like thought at all. about the person that Kovalev, the family of the Kovalev, person yeah. that Kovalev did, unfortunately, yeah. hurt in the ring. I mean, or kill in the ring. It, leave it alone. Yeah, this, the, the, the promotion is one thing, but there's a bit about taste and class and a little respect. You yeah. know what I mean? And I like Pascal. I, 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 I think he's entertaining, I think he's a good fighter, but I thought that was really, really. Hell Brook versus Amir Khan. Apparently, negotiations are on the way as Amir Khan lost his two major opponents with the big May 2nd May of Pacquiao card. Mm. Does this fight happen? And if it happens, does it happen summer? G given that Kelbrook is back next month? It, it happens. 
Do I want it? And this is going to sound stupid as a boxing fan. Do I want it to happen this summer? No. Because I, I honestly, I still feel Kelbrook needs to build the brand a bit more. Yeah. I mean, I don't think um, beating Joe Dan Dan. Dan Dan Dan. Yeah, I don't think that builds your brand. Yeah, I think I think Amir Khan. It's fair to say has built his brand. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Amir Khan is is a known name. As much as you know, people want to go back and forth about a couple of losses. Even in the losses, he still fought those people. Yeah. Even if Kelbrook had fought the likes of mm. a Garcia and lost or Prescott and lost, for example, he's he still been in the ring with those kind of guys. Mm. I, I feel like he needs to build his brand a bit more, and it beca- it could become something really huge. I think that um, Eddie Hearn lure to Wembley thing yeah. is almost. Making fights not build enough, yeah. and I think this fight needs a bit more building. I mean, Amir Khan's only just stepped in the one four seven division. Even though they stepped in the one four, I'm on the other side of that coin. Where I think the fight could be made now because one, Kelvin's been asking it for a long time, and it's a great fight. But two, I think Amir Khan's kind of deserved this position where he is. Maybe yes, he only had a couple of fights at one four seven, but where does he really go? Kelvin's got options to fight at one four seven quite handily. I think Amir Khan's at a point now where you could say he is the second, sorry, the third biggest draw in the division. He is, he is the, 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 the third money man. The two guys he won can't get there. Everyone knows, in theory, it's not a step back, but it's not what you. It's not a step forward. Mm. Kel yeah. Brook has the vacant, has the, has the other title. Take Kel Brook. Yeah, there's there's one thing being the third money man, as you say. I give him that, but he's not the third best in the division. Mm. And I think there's still other, huge other fights for him. There's the Maidana rematch. There's Furman. There's there's. There's, there's a Broner type yeah. fight if he wants that. Yeah. There's other fights out there that can be made. I don't like when, it's almost like, uh, they, like someone loses badly in this fight, it, it, they kind of take a step back big time. And I don't think both of them need yeah. it. I think there's so many other 147 fights out there. There is, there is. Only if you see me with the Madonna fights, the Madonna's kind of two losses and can't beat one ready. So yes, it's a good fight. Yes, it sells on paper. Yes, it might be a bigger fail because obviously the experience and the Mario fight, but I just don't see it. If I was Khan, I think that's a backward step. The guy's coming off two losses. I want to go forward. Backward step to fight the guy that put my, most, most pressure on me for since I'm not, see, uh, if, whoever. I, so from Khan's bet, I beat him already. Mm. He's just lost two fights. Why should I go fight him? Unless the money's proportionally in my side, I don't see why I will fight him. Yeah, and we see, so Maidana's a step back and Kel's a step up. Kelvin's Kel- Kel- got a world title. Not having it. Kelvin's Kel- got a that's, world title. Kelvin's Kel- Kel- world title mean nothing. No, no, no. no. Kelvin's Kel- 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 got a world title. It's nothing. a huge domestic match. It's a fight that has to happen either, either way. Put it now. Interesting. Put it now. Let's go. We Some do. interesting news. I mean, inter- in- interesting. This week, the session boys all been ordering certain matches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good topic. Everyone's just going out like yeah. throwing matches. Like, you think these matches are not going to happen? Yeah. So I'm just going to mention them. Why, why, yeah, why, why are they doing this? Go on. Let's okay. throw the matches out first. Let's throw the first, the first one out. The WBA has ordered Ward versus Froch. Yeah. Do you think Ward ain't fought no one in what, 18 months? Mm. Carfrich is injured and can't fight, and he's gonna fight Chavez, it seems like, after, if Chavez gets from Farah. So why announce or order a fight when both the guys can't make the fight? Yeah, it seems like it's almost like a power trip. Um, boxers have almost now seem to be taking over, where I wouldn't say belts don't mean much, but it gets to a stage where these marquee names yeah. are fighting for money and for legacy and not necessarily for belts. But these guys, they're almost hanging on to belts. Yeah. So I can understand it in a way. I mean, Andre Ward's been a super champion for how long, but yeah. hasn't fought for so long. Yeah. Cotto's in a position where he's middleweight champion, yeah. but he's been calling out guys at like 147 yeah. and 154. So I, I get it in a weird way. Yeah. Very, very, yeah. Cotto, Cotto's been mandated to fight um, GGG. Yeah. It's like, these fights are not going to happen. It's Never just... going to happen. I don't get it. I don't get the point behind it. Never going to happen. And why haven't they asked Floyd Mayweather to fight? He's mandatory. There you go. And then Floyd Mayweather just picked whoever he wants to pick. Well, again, people will mandate in press bids. The girl versus the Darrell versus the girl is going press bids for the tenth of March, which is one week from now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like that fight's going to happen. Yeah. I don't want it to happen in a weird way. I'll be honest with you, I don't want that fight to happen. I think that's a very, very tough fight, mm. uh, and it's almost a tough fight that I hope to set out. I hope. I don't want to be pay per view because it means mm. fans are paying, but it almost needs that appreciation for what, yeah. how big a fight it is. Does, does that make sense? What I'm yeah. saying, um, it's a huge fight between two guys that are beautiful boxers, mm. and no, I don't like it. I like it. Yeah, I'm excited like to see people. Fight. I can't wait for that fight. And please, Eddie Hearn, please, please win the purse bid and make that at the O2 oh. in London. Standard. <coughs> Standard. Who's who's it going against? Yes. Who, who's, oh. um, who's it? Gary Short? No, who's who's things from her? I'm not sure. 
Is he I'm Heyman? not sure. I but I I'm he's a Heyman fight. there. I'm there. I'm stamped to go right now. I'm ready to go. I'm there for it. No, it will be a good fight. Uh, another fight that's been announced. Talk about purse plays, but this one's done, signed, sealed, delivered. Lucas Matisse versus <laughs> Ruslan Provodnikov. Oh, boy. Oh, they shouldn't call that a fight. They just call it KO. Yeah, that that yeah. that is BKB. Yeah, that's just that's a BKB KO. fight. That is just called KO. Um, Who you make favorite early on that one? Matisse. I was gonna say Matisse until I saw his frailties against in the Molina fight. Yeah. And it shows if someone does stand there with yeah. him, if they've got a chance. The only reason I, I I'm kind of gone the soft on Provodnikov is because he got beat by Herrera. I mean, yeah. sorry, beat by Algeri. Yeah. But that was someone that was boxing. Yeah. These two are just going to go like, boom. I, I tell you what, the thing, the thing what I like about Matisse is that when, he, when he's on point, he has the ability to switch it up quick, like in the Lemont Peterson fight. Yeah. He pivots well, he puts it on very well. And he's that like little edge and speed, and Provodnikov sometimes can literally be plodding. Mm. And I think if he plods a little, and Matisse has that little nimbleness on him, He'll walk into something. One factor on the fight as well, it could be, is that look, let's fight, let's fight, I think it's a couple of weeks. They've got Wilder testing for that fight as well. So oh, yeah, have, have to have yeah. Wilder testing for that fight Bloody as well. hell, yes. But uh, what I was going to say is that the fight's um, a couple of weeks before the main fight. fight. Mm. Um, Provodnikov's trainer is obviously Freddie Roach. I don't mm. know how much time Freddie Roach is going to spend with, Mati with, with Provodnikov when, you know, Pacquiao, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. And although he says, I give you, you know, all my, you know, guys the right amount of time, that, please. He does it. Okay. I've got a couple emails, I saw it on World Star Hip Hop, I saw it on, uh, I think it was Daily News as well, I saw it. Hey, you heard of a guy called um, Tishan Dong? Yeah, the seven foot. Yeah. You've not, you've not been following him? No, I haven't been oh, following, following him. following him for fun. He's been, okay, well, basically, the past two days, it's like, I can't get rid of this guy. Yeah, go on, this guy, really hyping him up. This guy's like getting press releases, getting videos, articles, everything. Seven foot monster mm. that's going to take over boxing. No, he's not going to take over That's boxing. what they're saying. Oh, yeah. When they said that, I thought, I remember about 20 years ago when The Sun, they had Nikolai Value in there as the beast of the East is going to take over boxing. Mm. But Nikolai Value was not an athlete. Yeah. This guy actually looks like an athlete. He does. And to be fair, yeah. he's trained by Buddy McGirt. Buddy McGirt, yeah. So he looks good on the pads as well. I've him on the pads, but... And Buddy McGirt said he's got serious power. How old is he? I oh, no. Look how old he is. I don't know. They say he's got serious power, and obviously for a guy that size, he's got that power. And he was saying, Buddy was hyping, saying it's Mike Tyson that power or bigger than Tyson. I don't believe that part, but how do people measure that? Uh, uh, Mike Tyson, uh, uh, like, uh, no, what are you I talking mean, about? Yeah, is that a name to look out for? It's only three fights in. No. I mean, no, I don't. Think, I think it's, it's just Boy doing their thing, and it's working. It's working. Yeah. We're talking about it. So it's got the social media. It's got people, you know, on social yeah. media going crazy because because of the way he looks. You know what it is. I think, as you said, more importantly, he's seven foot two, but he looks as yeah. ripped as a guy that's five foot. Yeah, you know I mean? he's ripped. He looks in shape. He he looks he's in, in very shape. good shape. That's the. I think that's the thing. But nah. Nah. Well, that's all I got. Is that it? Yeah. Alright, guys. There's the news. This that's this week in boxing. Um, fights coming up next week. Is Berto? No, not Berto. No, next week. Furman. Furman. Yeah, Furman Guerrero. Furman Guerrero. Um, and who else um, is Brona. The Brona. Brona Molina. So it's like, literally, it's fights after fights after fights after fights. The boxing season has started. It really has, and it's like full effect. But fights that we're still waiting for. We're still waiting for Andre Ward. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's the, they're supposed to, it's supposed to fight in March, wasn't he? Not yeah. announced they're for They wanted to fight in March, but... Still waiting for Khan. Still waiting for Cotto. Yeah. Still waiting for Bradley. I think, a few marquee names, I don't know what they're doing. I think all those fights are, all those fights are not going to fight now until after May, because no news is having a fight before then. So expect, all, expect for a huge summer. A huge summer. They'll announce the fights, but everyone will fight in June. Alright right, guys, so uh, that's this week in boxing. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, you can always email us at boxtalk at hotmail.co.uk, on Twitter at boxtalk.uk, and Instagram at boxtalk underscore one. And while I'm on that, um, give a shout out to my mate Courtney. Always email us, give you some good information, good facts. Courtney, thanks for the stuff, mate. Alright, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching another edition of This Week in Boxing. Cheers.